Howdy folks, this is Big Sam. Today, I'm going to tell you how you can easily shoot pistol ammunition, in particular 7.62x25 Tokarev, through your Mosin Nagant. Now this might sound a little bit crazy because, of course, we're used to shooting the infamous 7.62x54 rimmed rifle cartridge through Mosins because, of course, well, that's what pretty much all of them are chambered for. But it's a little known fact that you can actually shoot a lot of pistol cartridges through Mosin Nagant rifles. Now, how can we do this? Well, it's through the magic of something called a chamber insert. This wonderful little device may look like a spent cartridge like this. Up here is the bullet, down here is the case. This kind of looks like a case except this is actually very, very different. So how does a chamber insert actually work? Uh, well, what we do know is to get a cartridge to actually fire in here, um, the firing pin is gonna have to hit the primer all the way at the back here. Now, if we tried to go ahead and put our pistol cartridge into the, the Mosin, uh, the chamber for this cartridge is so big it's going to end up going all the way up in here and well if we tried firing it it's going to be all the way up here and the firing pin isn't even going to hit the primer on this little pistol cartridge so what we do instead is we take a chamber insert okay so this is a specially made device that's kind of hard to get but we'll talk about that here in a little bit what this does is it simulates uh, a actual cartridge taking up the space that a cartridge would and then here in the back it allows you to then take a pistol cartridge for instance this guy is for Tokarev ammo so you take our Tokarev ammo and I'm not going to put it all the way because it can get tight but he can sit all the way in there and then it'll be flush and then you can then insert this chamber insert into the rifle and I'm not going to put it all the way because, again, these can get kind of stuck, but you can just then... Um, and this one can be a little bit tricky. We'll talk about that more in a second. But, see, just throw them all the way in there with your pistol cartridge in there. And then your primer is here going to be flush at the back, just like it would be in a normal cartridge. Then you can chamber it, close the bolt, and then fire the rifle. It's then going to hit the pistol primer, which is, of course, going to ignite the powder, and then it's going to send the bullet flying forward. Now, how does that work? Well, the reason this works is because, again, this is hollow. You can see that. See, this is hollow, so you can see through it here. So the bullet is actually going to start here, and then it's going to travel through the insert. And then it's actually, in this particular case, going to then engage with the rifling, which is a one reason this is actually really cool, and at least... One reason you may actually want to do this because this should engage with the rifling in theory at least and well we haven't done any testing yet but at least has the potential to be fairly accurate if you're engaging with the rifling if you can get a proper spin on that bullet like a football you might be able to get decent accuracy at least at close range with this rascal and of course you're shooting a pistol cartridge through a rifle we put out a short video a little while ago doing this and if you watch that you'll see there's very little recoil so a really interesting concept now once you fire this okay a couple of things happen this is where it's sort of like in bullet inception and what I mean by that is you'll have your uh, cartridge in the chamber insert and you fire it of course the bullet goes out the barrel that way uh, but what's gonna happen is you have two different fire formings occur you're, first of all, you're going to have your Tokarev brass is going to fire form to the inside of this chamber insert, okay? So it's going to fire form in there. But also, you'll see there's a little ring here. Sorry about that. So my bullet down. There's a little bit of a ring here. So what also happens is the chamber insert simultaneously also fire forms to the chamber, just like a typical cartridge would. And that's why you see this kind of weird ring here is because... We fired this like uh, 10 or 15 times or something through this rifle. And what happened is, of course, the insert has fire formed into 
the chamber of this particular rifle. And you can see that here. So you actually might, if you if you take this and shoot it through a Mosin, it'll fire form to that Mosin. You might then actually run into some difficulty with chambering this in another rifle. So that's one thing to be aware of. Generally speaking, I would say if you're gonna get one of these, uh, just kind of dedicate it to a specific Mosin if you have multiple. So kind of strategize on which one you'd like to shoot. Uh, in this case, Tokarev ammo through, and then this, and set it aside knowing this guy is for this particular rifle. Because I did have some trouble trying to get this chambered in another Mosin after I had shot this and it fire formed to the chamber of this rifle. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now, chamber inserts are kind of weird. Depending on the rifles, some of these will actually be rifled on the inside. For instance, they make chamber inserts so you could shoot pistol ammunition through a 12 gauge shotgun. And of course it's not gonna engage with the rifling because for one, 12 gauge is way bigger than any pistol cartridge, virtually. And a lot of them aren't even rifled to begin with. So in order to get good accuracy, you know, the chamber inserts will be like that, and then you might have an inch or two of rifling. So your accuracy would be kind of the same as a, a very, very short-barreled handgun, potentially. But we don't need that in the case of a Mosin because 762 by 25 Tokarev has the same bullet diameter as 762 by 54 rimmed. Now, why is that? Well, it's an interesting thing because there's, while there's not necessarily precedent for specifically shooting Tokarev ammo through a Mosin in, let's say, a military context, there, there is indirectly. And what I mean by that is, um, back in the days of the Siege of Leningrad around 1942, a, uh, a Russian engineer, I, be, I believe by the name of Spagin, was developing the PPS-42 submachine gun with basically whatever tooling and parts they had around this besieged city. And of course, we know that rifle came out to be the PPS-42, a actually really good rifle. Of course, it was then kind of redeveloped into the PPS-43, and then a lot of other countries kind of used their own version of it, including Finland and Poland later. But this was a really good rifle. And it was made out of stamp parts, kind of potentially even set a precedent for how the AK-47, uh, really the AKM, with a stamped receiver would end up being produced. But to get, uh, without getting too far down that tangent, one of the interesting things about Spagen's gun in production, at least in the early days in the Siege of Leningrad, is the Russians in Leningrad had a, a lot of old M91 Mosin Nagants from, you know, World War One and even before laying around. So what they actually did was they took those barrels, removed the barrels from the rifles, and then they actually would cut them up. And they would actually use sections of those barrels from those M91 Mosins, and they would directly convert them into barrels for the PPS-42 submachine gun, which of course used this 7.62x25 uh, Tokarev cartridge. Now why why did they do that? Well, it works. Uh, it's the same bullet diameter. Now is it coincidence that it's the same bullet diameter? Actually, no. This is another interesting point. You see, the reason these guys have the same bullet diameter really comes down to ease of barrel production. So. Originally, this guy started out life being used in the uh, TT-33 handgun, which I'm sure a lot of y'all are familiar with, but of course fired this Tokarev cartridge. Um, now, one of the interesting things is if you want to create, let's say you have your main rifle production is the Mosinagat rifle. If you want to and then introduce uh, handgun production, the most annoying part of production in rifles, especially back then, was barrel production. So one of the ingenious ways they got around this issue of having separate barrel production for these new Tokarev pistols was, let's say you had a Mosin barrel where like maybe the very front of it or just a small part of it was rejected or it had a flaw, but like let's say nine tenths of the barrel was salvageable. In cases like that, 
um, until this guy came around, that whole barrel would just be thrown away, right? Really expensive and you're just ha introducing a lot of waste. So instead of throwing the whole barrel away, they said, well, if we have a, a scenario where part of the barrel on a Mosin is bad, but a lot of it's good, we're gonna take that barrel, cut it up, and then use it to build a TT-33 Tokarev pistol barrel. And that's one of the reasons that Mosins will have the same bullet diameter as Tokarevs, because a lot of times they actually use Mosin barrels to produce Tokarev barrels. Same thing happened for, maybe you've heard of this guy, the 7.62 Nagant pistol, which we'll talk about in another video. Like this, it's in 7.62 caliber, but it's by 38. Same bullet diameter as these two bullets. And I don't have one of those here on hand, but you'll have to take my word for it. So, with that long-winded winded explanation, hopefully now it makes sense why in, it actually kind of makes sense to actually shoot a Tokarev bullet through a Mosin because, well, it's actually kind of happened in history, albeit in maybe submachine guns or hand, or, but, but it's, it's really, really strange. I know history is weird guys, and that's why we love it. Okay. Now this isn't actually the only, um, cartridge you could potentially shoot through this, uh, chamber insert. Cause remember 762 by 25 Tokarev is really just a modification of uh, I believe it's 30 Mauser, which was used in the uh, Mauser broom handle pistol. Basically the same cartridge uh, in that gun, except it had less powder. So you could theoretically use one of those in these, because it's the same uh, dimensions essentially, but since it has a less powder and less velocity, you do have to start worrying about squibs, especially if you have a long barrel, so that's one thing to consider. And a word to the wise, if you start shooting these, especially early on, um, unless you're absolutely sure that, let's say you, you hit steel and you hear it ring, or you see, you know, you kick up, a dirt kick up where you're firing, after every shot, um, it's really good to just uh, pull out your chamber insert. And the way you do that is it's just like any other cartridge when you fire it, you just open it up and open the bolt and extract it because the extractor will catch the rim. So it's just like extracting a case. You just have to then beat out the brass, which fire forms to the chamber insert. That's kind of annoying, but other than that, it's a pretty simple process. Um, but so it's good when you do that, just to check to make sure that you didn't squib in your rifle. Cause you don't want to fire a squib and then try firing another round. Cause that's going to cause catastrophic failure and potentially uh, injury and life-threatening injury. So don't do that. It's always good to be on the safe side to make sure you don't squib, especially if you're not shooting hot ammo or you're shooting, um, let's say maybe surplus ammo that sometimes, as we know, the powder can kind of go bad on those. So just be a little bit careful. But other than that, um, this, this can be quite entertaining to shoot. And this ammo generally isn't all that expensive, at least not all that much more expensive than 54R is right now. But this is uh, a lot slower to shoot because you have to take this out and then punch the case out. So it's actually a little bit more rewarding, I feel like, because you have to do more work and it's just a little bit more gratifying. And you won't go through ammo as fast doing this, so it's just kind of fun. And, and even more interesting than that, um, the 30 Mauser cartridge is really just a modification off of the original 30 Borchardt cartridge, which is one of the earliest, really modern type of handguns there were. This, the uh, Some of y'all might be familiar with the Borchardt from video games such as Red Dead Redemption and Battlefield 1. Really weird looking gun, but it kind of, the cartridge kind of looked the same, just a lot weaker than 7.62x25 Tokarev. That, I don't, I don't think many people actually have 30 Borchardt proper laying around, but if you did, I wouldn't recommend shooting it with a, a Mosin like this. Um, what you might be able to do if you had, let's say, an Obrez that you've SBR'd with has like a two inch barrel, you might actually be able to shoot that a uh, 30 bore shark through an obrez, but past that, I would really be concerned about squibs. So uh, that's that. Now, how does one actually 
uh, go about acquiring a chamber insert? Because I know some of y'all might be, be wondering that right about now. Uh, well, that's actually a really good question. So the chamber inserts, like I mentioned earlier, these are actually pretty rare. And I think one of the reasons is because after the, uh, uh, the COVID hit a couple of years ago, a lot of people were concerned about the lack of availability in ammunition. And what this is nice is it, let's say you don't, for some reason you have no 54R laying around, but you do have either 30 Mauser or Toker of ammo, you can then shoot your Mosin if this is the only gun you have, and you happen to be able to get those types of pistol rounds, even though maybe the supply chain prohibits you from getting the actual rounds for your Mosin. There were a lot of preppers and people, and really those types of people, the preppers, who I, I don't make fun of, because I... They have some legitimate concerns a lot of the time. But um, a lot of the preppers have always really liked these chamber inserts because it gives you a lot more flexibility in ammunition you can shoot in any particular rifle. So these have always been kind of hard to get over the past few years. Um, and I was able to still get one of these off of numeric gun parts. And I'll post a link into the description Hopefully they're still in stock as of the time you're watching this. Um, but if not, understand you know, p these are pretty pretty uncommon. Um, I don't know if they actually still make these. Now, typically, back in the day, like 10 or 15 years ago, the, I think the most common chamber insert for Mosins was actually, was it 32 ACP? I think that was a fairly common one as well. That one I would actually be concerned about about potentially squibbing although i'm not exactly sure on the dimensions you might be okay with the bullets but uh, don't quote me on that the tokarev is probably again your best bet because you're going to get rifling engagement potentially good accuracy and probably a low depending on your cartridge a low light and barrel length obviously if you have a shorter barrel length maybe like a carbine on this guy you have a little bit less chance of squibbing but again you should always make sure you don't squib when you're firing these so this guy was cheap. I think this was about $20, $25 US. And this is the only chamber insert for a Mosin I could find was for the 7.62x25 Toker of cartridge. Not just Mosins, just in general, chamber inserts. Like I said, the preppers bought all these up. These are kind of hard to find right now. So if you do find one of these, yeah, you could say this is a novelty, but it's actually pretty cool. A lot of people really like these. A lot of people don't care for them at all, but the people who like these just can't get enough of them. Now, one question you also might have is, well, Big Sam, could you load maybe a bunch of these? Like, let's say you, had, you bought five chamber inserts. Could you load all five into the magazine and then load them and fire them one at a time just like you would with 54R ammo? And the answer to that is not exactly. So one of the problems is if you try loading this from the magazine, uh, it'll hang up, I think right about there, okay? And now why is that? Well, we'll talk about this in another video, but I think one of the big issues is actually because your Mosin, or most Mosins that you'll probably come across don't actually have a feed ramp, okay? And we'll talk about this more in a video, but because of that, you'll actually hit here on the bottom of the back of the chamber at the beginning of the barrel. And there's no feed ramp, so it's not going to slide up into the chamber. It's just going to get stuck there, all right? And you push on it all you want, he ain't going to go anywhere. Now, you might actually have better luck with this if you have a, a Mosin made before 1941, because those actually had feed ramps. Um, and you don't need feed ramps for this ammunition for loading from a magazine. Um, the feed ramps are, were actually originally developed for the old original bottlenose 54R projectile going all the way back to 1891. But if we take our rifle here, I load this guy into the magazine like that. You'll see that I can load him and then he's going to get caught. So, um, uh, it's just a little bit unfortunate. Now, it might work, and it might, it might not, but it probably won't 
Uh, it certainly probably won't reliably work, especially if you don't have a feed ramp. Now, I haven't really tried that because for, for a couple reasons. One, I only have one of these guys so far. The other one is I haven't tried it in a Mosin that actually has a feed ramp. And I kind of can't because this guy's already fire formed to the chamber on this guy. And I've, I tried, but it it seems to not really work in other Mosins. So I might end up getting a few more of these if I can. But again, these guys are kind of expensive. If you wanted to, uh, let's say, load a whole magazine five rounds with these, you need five of these, which would be about $125 US. So having five of these is a little bit expensive. Now, if you, if you if you really intend on being serious and actually using Toker of Ammo through your Mosin, um, that would be my recommendation. It'd be to get five of these and then try to get a Mosin with a feed ramp and see how that goes for you. Uh, no guarantees, but it's something at least worth trying. And if you have any input on success or maybe if you tried that and it hasn't worked for you, let us know in the comments. But there's a lot of interesting things we can do with this. Now, uh, as far as compatibility goes, this guy really should work, theoretically at least, in any Mosin in 54R, which is millions of rifles. So really good from a compatibility standpoint. Just remember, you might have trouble loading this. Um, so that's just one thing to be aware of. You might have to kind of fiddle around with it and try to get it with your hand like that. So it may not be the fastest thing in the world, especially if you don't have that feed ramp to help you out loading. But overall, would I recommend one of these? Um, I, I, I would to the right person. Because again, this is mainly a novelty, but I actually had so much fun and I enjoyed this so much shooting it that I, the amount of enjoyment I got out of this, even though... We kind of had to make a jig from a 45 cartridge and sit it on the 40, or a case, excuse me, and sit it on the case and then beat the empty brass for the toker rev out that way. It's, yeah, with a hammer. If you need a hammer to reload your gun, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but it's, it's fun, you know? It's just something different, and I know if you tried this, you'll get a kick out of it. So a lot of fun, kind of a novelty, and a lot of people may not have even realized this is something you can do shooting Tokarev ammo through a Mosin. So hopefully y'all enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. If you like more Mosin Nagant content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let me know if y'all have any prayer requests and we'll see you next time.